Pokey Palace, JJ here. I've been a little MIA, I've been busy, guys, but I got a holy grail item here. I got a jungle booster pack. I can't believe it. I'm so happy. Shout out to my buddy Christian for hooking me up with this. Yes, I bought it. And yes, it is not a three or four dollar pack like back in 2000 when I was a kid. I probably opened about 50 to 100 of these with my paper money. Love it. Just wanted to come through and drop a quick video guys um i just want to talk about my opinion on vintage and modern product obviously vintage is nostalgic for you know my generation you know 20 mid 20s mid 30s you know it brings us back to a time of childhood time where nothing mattered you know we didn't have responsibilities we just ripped pokemon packs that's what we loved but this is the thing i want to talk about now, I'm not here saying modern's gonna overappreciate vintage. There's no way in hell. A base set booster box will never be beat unless it's by, you know, Jungle, Fossil, Team Rocket, one of those nostalgia sets, like one of those vintage sets. Sorry, guys. You know, Expedition, Sky Ridge. Those are holy grail items. No modern product's gonna pass that. But I'm gonna give you guys some, a little bit of optimism for modern. And. I'm going to start with something that I just experienced. Um, my ex, I was that clamped in. As a kid, my mom always told me, like when I walked in with this here, <laughs> here's a quick little story. My mom's, my mom, I'm like, mom, mom, like I'm on the moon right now, guys. I'm so pumped up. I held this and I had tears of joy for like five minutes. So I walked in. I'm pretty, pretty pumped at this point. You know, I just got the jungle pack. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Keep in mind, guys, it is an unlimited pack. It's not first edition. It is a light pack, but it still fetched a pretty buck. So I'm like, Mom, Mom, look at this. I'm like, this is from when I was grade six, grade seven. I was opening these packs. She's like, oh, God, what'd you spend on that? I'm like, what's about 250, 300 bucks? She's like, you're nuts. I'm like, first off, I spent 200 bucks on it. I'm like, second off, you want to know what's really nuts? I was opening these packs with my paper route money for th they were three to four dollars a piece. OK, in 2000. And you told me cardboard is a waste of money and I'm wasting my hard-earned money. I'm like, you tell me if I kept those sealed how much money I'd have today. That's what's really nuts, guys. That's where I'm going to start this off. When we were kids, okay, I'm 30, 33 years old next month. When we were kids, our parents did not encourage Pokemon on us. In fact, many parents did the opposite Obviously, it was a hobby for just children. It was just starting up. Um, but parents said you're wasting your money on cardboard. Boy, parents are right 90% of the time. But I tell you, they were never more wrong in this regard. So now, let's fast forward to this era. A lot of people's parents, we grew up loving Pokemon. So Pokemon's more encouraged beyond children, okay? So right there, it's a positive for modern, okay? Like I said, I'm not going to say modern's going to overappreciate vintage products because it's not, okay? Sealed products, base set and all that will never be passed by evolving skies or anything like that. But what I am saying is that right now, this era, you have a hobby that is not just kids driven, it's adult driven. There's more range of people age-wise that are in love with it collect it enjoy it. it brings a family together kids are more encouraged now more than ever to collect pokemon because their parents love it okay that's a positive for, for modern okay now another little point i want to make yeah uh, that, that's probably an obvious one right like the future of any hobby whether it be funkos action figures comic books you you name it right the the, the kids of today it's a future the future of any successful hobby right guys so <coughs> excuse me so another thing i want to another point i want to make now if you bought a base set booster box okay and you opened it you're pulling 90 percent of the hollows maybe 80 okay maybe i'm boosting a bit but if you if you open five evolving skies booster boxes okay you're happy with one alt art I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out Cool Trainer Ryan. I saw him open four booster boxes and five sleeved blisters, and he pulled a Neuburn alt art. Okay, another interesting point. Now, 
That Umbreon reaching for the moon in that set is selling for, what, 500 bucks Canadian right now? That Charizard Unlimited card... Now I get there wasn't as much money in Pokemon. Pokemon hadn't blown up. But that Charizard Unlimited card... I'm not going to talk about the first edition of Shadow List because I can't remember that. That card didn't pass 75 bucks for the first five years. Okay? That Umbreon card... That Evolving Skies set has not even been out a year yet. It's not even been out a year yet, guys. It'll be a year in two months. And that card was already fetching 500 bucks raw, okay? Now, <laughs> that's good for Modern. I'm not going to sit here and say that card's going to pass uh, Unlimited PSA 10 First Edition Charizard, because it's not. At least not in our lifetime. But, um, the, and also, guys, the thing is, you think kids 10, 20 years from now, they're going to, oh, let, let, let's, I really want to open a base set or a Team Rocket booster box. That's going to really hit home. No, they're not going to give a rat's ass about that. Once my generation dies, yes, vintage sealed product is going to be even higher than 50, 60 grand what we saw like a year ago. It probably will be, but I bet you won't sell. Not when my generation's dead. What is going to sell in 10 to 20 years to these children who have money or working now is the sets like Shining Legends, Shining Fates, Hidden Fates, Cosmic Eclipse, Evolving Skies, Brilliant Stars, Astral Radiance because the pull rates are high. These are the sets, okay? And this is what children are going to want when they're older. <laughs> it's the truth. I like to say I'm lying. My generation likes the vintage because that's what we grew up on. Who doesn't want to go back to an easier time in life? And everyone's life just seemed easier and a little more enjoyable when you're a child. That's just the reality, guys. And yeah, obviously, you, you can say Pokemon's printing more than they ever have. That's fair. But those chase cards are harder to pull. People are taking care of their cards more, I get that. But those chase cards are harder to pull. And everything that's modern today becomes vintage tomorrow. Not, not go to bed tonight and wake up tomorrow and it's, it's vintage. I'm talking like 20, 30 years down the road. You don't think in 20, 30 years that Evolving Skies might have a bit of a vintage hash asterisk on it? Yeah, it will never be the most vintage thing. But it will definitely be vintage. It's aged. In 20 years from now, okay, 2041, let's say, 2042-ish, that evolving, evolving Skies booster box, keep in mind there'll be far less of them available. Yeah, there'll be quite a bit because there's more sealed collectors nowadays than there was back then. I get that. You got to look at every angle. But that Evolving Skies booster box in 20 years will fetch eight grand. I will sell my soul on it. It's not going to be 40, 50 grand. As long as it took the, you know, vintage products to go in 20 years. But <laughs> it's going to be at least eight grand. E fuck, even battle styles. Even battle styles in 20 years will fetch you 900 bucks a booster box. A thousand bucks a booster box, if you can find a buyer. <laughs> and trust me, nostalgia hits all of us pretty hard, guys. And this is my opinion. Doesn't mean I'm right. I'm just giving my opinion. I strongly believe modern is in a really good place. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to say modern is going to be more than vintage because the reality is it never will be most likely, right? Yeah, you'll have vintage cards that, like non-hollow rares and stuff, that will be surpassed by the Umbreon reaching at the moon in 15, 20, you know what I'm saying? Like, But the chase cards of vintage are just, there's it's rarity and, you know, quantity and there just is not as many PSA 10 base set Charizard, Sky Ridge Charizard, you know? That's just how it was. My generation didn't really take care of the cards like the kids of today are and the adults of today are, you know, today. But I will tell you, modern will appreciate and value, guys. Nostalgia's real. And Pokemon's never been this big. And parents encourage children to collect... And Pokemon's the largest grossing media franchise of all time. And Pokemon, anyone, everyone who's watching this video, 
Pokemon will outlive you. We're all going to die. I don't care if you're five years old watching this video. You will die before Pokemon dies. I don't even know if Pokemon ever will die. It brings everyone closer together. I, I've, I've never really seen anything other than music and sports. I've never really seen a hobby unite a community like Pokemon does. So yeah, guys, um, if you're still a collector, um, my only advice is don't try to buy every set like I've been doing because like I have some battle styles I'm sitting on and stuff like that. You can really avoid that. Um, load up on the, the, the really big sets like Evolving Skies, um, Champion's Path, Hidden Fates, Evolutions too, but Evolutions, you know, it's really based off base set, right? You're not going to have a lot of kids really value Evolutions like, you know, the adults of today do, but Shining Fates, absolutely. Um, Shining Legends, Hidden Fates, um, Evolving Skies, man, Evolving Skies, that set is going to the moon. That set's going to the moon. Um, and <laughs> like I said, guys, don't be surprised if that booster box is close to 10 grand in 20 years. Honestly, don't. Because it's going to happen, in my opinion. Yes, I could be wrong. I don't have a crystal ball. But I'm just saying Modern has a lot going for it. Um, not to mention, l l let's face it, guys, art-wise, okay, modern just smashes vintage, smashes it. The art on Pokemon cards today is just breathtaking, you know? Like, most of the alt arts I've, I, I own, not just the Charizard from Brilliant Stars, that alt art, that's a beautiful card, every alt art I own... Uh, except for the Duraludon, I don't really like that, that that building, you know, but most alt arts I could stare at for 10-15 minutes easily. Vintage, okay, I could stare at it because the nostalgia is there, it, it just hits me somewhere, but honestly guys, modern is a safe investment, and if, and if you're not rich or have a lot of money or capital where you can put into vintage right now, because vintage product is very expensive, you know, like if you want like the the high grade stuff like the PSA 10s of like the chase cards back then or sealed product or like I couldn't like I couldn't justify buying uh, a jungle booster box but I could justify buying one pack because this one pack to me guys brings me so much joy and I, I have ultra premium collection boxes I have stuff that does not even doesn't even bring me anything near the joy that this is this one pack light pack at that so there's a non-hollow in here brings to me guys and this is the future for kids there'll be a hidden fates pack in here for little timmy who's 10 years old and lives in toronto right now on his 30th birthday or 35th birthday 20 25 years from now He's going to be holding a Hidden Fates pack in here. And he's going to have Tears of Joy. The same Tears of Joy I had. And you don't think that Hidden Fates pack is going to be at least 120 150 bucks? Come on, guys. The data's there. The history's there. If anything, the kids of today have a little bit more of an advantage. A little bit more pull from their parents. And that's where I'm going to leave this video on, guys. I truly think modern. People who think modern's mass produced yeah you're right it is but what's gonna happen when 20 25 years from now you can't get it it's gonna go up supply and demand guys if the demand's there which of all these guys the demand's been there right from the get-go for example i love using all these guys as an example if the supply is low and you can't buy it on the market and yeah okay maybe there's 20 people in your city that are sealed collectors that have a couple supply is still lower than it was the demand is still high and it's obviously above market values you can't get it at stores trust me guys modern is in a good spot and like i said vintage is the holy grail but modern modern's gonna make some some steps guys and uh get it while you can modern is also a cheaper buy-in right it's safer you know, if you lose out, you don't lose as much money, you know. But, uh, yeah, that's it for the video, guys. 
If you like this content, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I love you all. You guys are so great. Just listen to me ramble and give my opinions and pack openings. Uh, we have the Pokemon Go set coming out July 1st. We are opening this Crimson Invasion in a week or two right here. Do -do -do. So all those pulls will go to one of you lucky viewers. Anyways, guys, I'm going to end this now. It's a little longer than I wanted it to be. Love, peace, chicken grease. Stay Pokemon, Pokey fam.